I'm just going to do a little video on Bougainvillea, but Robbie, the resident Robin, is having a bath and he's kind of distracting me a bit. <laughs> Hello Robbie. Are you having a bath? <laughs> this Bougainvillea is called Purple Princess and it was very cheap. I think I only paid about seven pounds for it. Uh, little, I think, we're selling them. Back in March, my experience here in the UK with Bougainvillea has been a bit, um, a bit of a, a love-hate relationship with her. Um, I love her at the moment because look, what's not to love? She looks lovely. But um, it's been a rocky road. <laughs> when I bought her in March, um, came home brought her into the sunroom because March too cold for a bougainvillea but sunroom very light very bright um she might like it in there no no within days she lost every single bract all the pink bits off everything and then she started to lose leaves <laughs> so I was about to bin her um so I did a bit of research and um found out that they are really temperamental and uh, not the easiest thing to grow in this country Anyway, my experience has been, if you um, bring them indoors, they'll just drop everything. The bracts, the leaves, they'll just drop everything. But that is not the end of the world because there is a way to get them to rebloom. And the way I found best to get this bougainvillea to rebloom was to not water it at all maybe even two weeks, didn't water her at all. The best thing I found that worked for me, in my experience, was to just dry her out completely. Then you start to water it, give it a good drink. And it's amazing, within a matter of days, it will start to leaf out. And she did. The bracts were forming and I could see that you know, they were going to turn pink. Um, I started to feed her with um, half strength um, Tomorite. But then um, towards the end of May, we went away. We have a place in Wales and we went away for four or five days. And I came back because I popped her in the sunroom thinking she'll be okay in here. It's not going to be cold and wrong. Came back from um, Wales after sort of four or five days. And um, she'd... She'd lost loads of leaves. All the bracts had started to drop. So I was back to square one with her. So I just did exactly what I'd done back in March when she originally got here and dropped everything. I didn't water her. I just left her to completely dry out for a good 10 days. And then once she looked like, you know, death's door, I watered her and sure enough, all the leaves started to grow again and she started to have bracts come in again and um, she's flowered again difficult to to grow and um, as the winter's coming here later in the year I'm not sure what I'll do I'm gonna have to acclimatize her to the sunroom again but I can't just put her in the sunroom and leave her there expecting her to be like this um, because she won't be, she'll just drop her leaves and we'll go through the whole scenario again. But one thing, <laughs> which is a real positive from it is, even though they look like they're at death's door and they drop all the leaves and they drop all the bracts, it's not the end of the world. You can't actually revive them by being unkind, by not watering it and um, maybe even cutting it back. Now, I haven't because this is such a young plant, I've only had it since March this year, I haven't cut her back. But I have heard that you can um, cut them back and that can encourage new growth. But I've, I've not um, attempted that yet, but as she grows, maybe that's something, if I do manage to keep her over the winter, which it's not a given, is it? I mean, I'm gonna try, but I haven't repotted her. She's still in the same pot that she was in um, when I bought her. I have stood that pot in a terracotta pot um, because I do think they do prefer to be in 
uh, terracotta pots, but because they also like to be um, have the roots slightly restricted, um, I have um, resisted the temptation to repotter, um, which you know I would I would normally have done by now with something that I'd bought in March. But she's doing so well um, in the original pot. Um, and I, I did read that they like to be restricted. Um, and this pot isn't that much bigger, actually, than her um, pot that she's in. So when I do pot her, um, it will be into this pot. Um, I'll see if I can get her out and then show you the size of the pot. This is the pot that she came in and um, won't be a massive um, difference just um, it's probably what is it less than half an inch all round um, which will be fine so um, until she needs repotting um, I'm going to keep her in there I don't know how long I'll get away with that but I'll just let let her tell me I'm sure at some point she'll have a hissy fit because she has plenty of those and um, I'll, I'll repot her then and um, probably try and choose a time when she's not in flower and not due to flower and due to have another hissy fit um, so anyway this is my exp experience of of growing um, bougainvilleas in North Yorkshire in the UK um, which at the moment is glorious because today we have um, a beautiful um, glorious uh, day it's um it's lovely and um we make the most of it when it is like this but um it does rain a lot here and it does get cold and last night it it dropped down low and when i got up this morning at about half six um it was zero so the greenhouse at the moment is reading 40 degrees <laughs> and when i got up this morning it was at about two or three so um that sun up there makes a massive difference and this is what boogie likes you see she she would like to be on a on an island maybe lanzarote or something maybe on the canaries that's where she'd really like to be not in um not in the yorkshire dales <laughs> but anyway i'm having a go and it's a challenge and so far um she's still alive I don't know that it's a roaring success, but she is still alive and um, she's flowered a couple of times, so um, it's not a fail, but um, I don't think they're easy to keep, but um, that's my experience. Keep them restricted. If they start to have a hissy fit, don't water them at all for days and days and days and days. And um, when all the leaves have fallen off, um, water it and um, watch it burst back into life and when it looks like it's about to flower feed it um, a sort of half solution half strength of tomorite and um, a slightly acidic soil if you don't have that which I don't because I haven't changed the soil it just it's in the pot that it came in I've been giving it um, a 50% um, strength ericaceous feed the sort of thing that you feed to your azaleas and rhodes and let it dry the top um, inch or two before you water it um, don't let it sit in water make sure that it's um, well well drained you've got good drainage holes and um, and last night because <laughs> She stayed in the greenhouse last night because she does on the night time. I bring her out when it's sunny and she goes in the greenhouse for the evening. Um, I actually wrapped her up in um, her own little um, puffer jacket. <laughs> we had um, a parcel delivered recently and it came with that blue um, air wrap stuff, you know, like it's like big long blue sausages full of air. And so she had um, a blue um, puffer jacket wrapped around her. <laughs> last night and I sat her in a truck and I put um, some fleecy blanket around the um, base of her 
as well. So she she sat in the greenhouse overnight in a in her own little puffer jacket. So anyway, she she hasn't lost any bracts or leaves this morning, so that worked. But it 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 got low this morning. It was about two or three degrees in the greenhouse and. They don't like to be below about 10, I don't think, which is impossible here, isn't it? So, um, okay in the house, but she won't like living in the house when she's flowering because there's not enough light. The light's too low. So, really, they're not ideal, are they? <laughs> I don't know why we punish ourselves like this, but we do try and grow things that are just that little bit beyond our capabilities. But anyway, so far, from March... To what are we are now mid September? She's still alive, yay! Um, so we'll see how we get through winter with her. Ooh. Gulp, but um, I'll see what I can do and let's see if she's still here in the spring next year. And, uh, and if she is, we'll um, we'll do a little vid.